there and welcome home. Here on Home with the Harrisons, we make content based on our many, many hobbies. For me, that tends to be cooking, like today, with some lifestyle thrown in. And for my husband, that tends to be gaming. I often join him there, with a little philosophy here and there. Now, we have too many hobbies to list all of them right now, but if any of the things that I mentioned sound good at all, you can go ahead and watch some of our older videos. You can like or subscribe if you want. We try and put out at least one video a week, usually on Mondays. Now, today, if you couldn't tell by the title of the video or this mound of pumpkins in front of me, I'm going to be cooking pumpkin. That's right, I'm going to show you how to choose the best pumpkin to take from fall decoration to a puree that you can use in any of your pumpkin desserts. If that sounds interesting at all to you, go ahead and keep on watching. Let's get cooking. All right, so I've got all my pumpkins set up in a row right here. And the first step is going to be choosing which ones I want to throw in my compost bin or leave out for the squirrels and which ones I really want to be baking up. Now let's start with this big one right here. It looks like it's a pretty good color, doesn't have too many marks on it. And I know this one's been inside my house, so it hasn't been through any of the predation from squirrels or any of the freeze thaw, freeze thaw that some of the ones outside have been. Um, but it is really big. And one thing I've noticed when cooking pumpkins is the really big ones tend to be kind of stringy. They have less of that sweetness that we associate with pumpkins and more of a, a vegetal flavor, which would be fine if you're making soup, but I'm not a huge fan of uh, savory squash dishes. So this is not going to be a pumpkin that I am interested in cooking up. It's a lot of work for something that isn't going to be the very best that I can get for my desserts. So this one's going to be put aside to go in my compost pan. This one here is a little smaller, but it's not quite that deep orange color. Uh, if you want to compare this, it's a little yellower, almost a green color compared to this nice deep orange right here. I don't know if you can see the difference in color. Let me pull these back. So you see how this one's a little yellower and this one's that nice deep orange. This one probably wasn't fully ripe when it was picked. And also, there's a lot of spots on this one, and it's a little softer than some of the other ones. I'm worried that if I did break this one down, it would be slightly rotten. And one of the ways you can tell is it'll start to get some, some discoloration spots on it. It'll get a little softer. And if you do cut open, it won't smell quite like other pumpkins do. It won't have that like nice, fresh vegetable smell it'll smell a little off. So this one too is going to be going to the squirrels and they will really enjoy that. Now I'm left with my three round pumpkins here. This one is the smallest. And like I said, the smaller ones tend to be sweeter. So I'm already looking forward to this one. It's got a nice deep orange color and it does have a little bit of spotting, but it looks like scarring from when it was growing rather than any sort of rotten spots. And you can tell that because this is nice and hard. It doesn't have that give that a rotten spot would have. So this one is definitely a keeper. I'm gonna put this one aside to rinse and cut open. This one too, it's got almost no blemishes on it, just a little bit of scarring from when it was growing. It's got that nice deep orange color to it. And it's that nice round shape, it's a small pumpkin. The other thing, I, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is you want a pumpkin to be nice and heavy for its size. You don't want a pumpkin that looks beautiful and is nice and big, but feels kind of light. That is another indication that there might be something wrong with that pumpkin. You want to look for a pumpkin that's nice and heavy for its size. And again, that nice deep orange color, this nice smaller compact size, and not a lot of blemishes on it. So this one's a great one. Now this one is kind of borderline, and I'm going to tell you why. It's got that same nice shape, it's got that beautiful deep orange color, and it's got almost no scarring or any marks on it at all. But the mark that it does have on it is it was outside and there was a squirrel that started nibbling on it. Now if I was particularly hard pressed for pumpkin puree, I might cut that bit out and bake it up and use it anyway. It's not going to be unsanitary because you're going to be baking these in a 350 degree oven for an hour anyway. It's going to get rid of any of those germs. 
And also, I would cut out any part that, that it was clear that the squirrel or whatever it was had touched. But this year, I had so many pumpkins. They took over my garden. I already have about a gallon of pumpkin puree in my freezer. So I am going to just put this one aside and let the squirrel finish eating that one. Not a big deal. All right, so we've got these two beautiful pumpkins here. Like I said, nice size, good shape, beautiful deep orange color, minimal markings on them, and they are nice and heavy for their size. So the next step is we're going to cut into these and start cleaning them out and getting them ready to go on those baking sheets. All right, so I've got my nice knife here. And what I like to do when I'm cutting into these pumpkins is I like to do it on a diagonal. That way I'm still getting half the pumpkin on either side, but the stem is only on one side. You don't want to try and cut through a stem. Doesn't work. Tried it. Don't ask why. Supposedly, I am an intelligent person. I have yet to see evidence of this sometimes. So I'm just trying to get like the nice diagonal that I want. So it's a nice and it's still half. It doesn't have to be perfectly half, you know? Oh, the other thing that I have come to realize in my many years of doing this is that the older your pumpkin is, the tougher it's going to be. So if you have a newer pumpkin, I'm going to be really careful right here and make sure that I am cutting away from myself because I've also cut myself because the pumpkin gave way too quickly. There we go. So that pumpkin was a little older than my first pumpkins coming out of the garden. And so I could definitely tell that because there was a little bit of a resistance when you were cutting into it. And you've got all these seeds. I'm going to cut the other one and then I'm going to show you what I do with the seeds. start here make sure there's like a nice angle yeah this one especially is very tough I know I shouldn't cut towards myself but I'm having trouble getting the right leverage otherwise because this pumpkin is so tough. <laughs> so did anybody do anything fun for Halloween yesterday? Well, I suppose for you it'll be a couple of days ago. For me, Halloween was yesterday and we actually had a really fun time. We did not go trick-or-treating because of, you know, the worldwide situation that we're living in right now. Uh, but we did, uh, we did have the kids dress up however they wanted to. My oldest found a hand-me-down suit coat that he has and some nice black pants and he decided that he was gonna borrow his daddy's fedora and be a detective <laughs> and his little brother thought that was the best idea and so he grabbed a pair of jeans and a nice shirt and said he was a detective they came up with the type of police procedural that they were detectives for they had names it was, it was very in-depth. It was very fun. For me, I wear the same witch costume every year. And it, so that didn't really change. But this year, I have an outdoor fireplace. So I set up a tri like a camping tripod over the outdoor fireplace and uh, put my Dutch oven, my cast iron Dutch oven over that, and I made chili. So here I am in my witch costume, cooking chili over an open fire. It looked very, like, magic potion-y. It was very fun, and I got... Lots of scared little kids and amused older kids and just people asking me what I was making for dinner because, yeah, it was a fun time. I hope you guys had something fun that you did for Halloween. Uh, if you had anything especially fun that you think would be interesting, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about what your Halloween was like. All right, I'm going to go get the special tool that I use for scooping out guts for pumpkins. Just a minute. But Jess, that is just a ice cream scoop. Well, no, it's a broken ice cream scoop, but it's got a nice sort of sharp-ish edge along this, and I can get plenty of guts out with just a few swipes. And actually, it'd be really nice if my husband would get me a bowl to put these guts in. <laughs> He's uh, just off camera. 
he is such a trooper in so many ways. Like, he married me. But, ah, we got a nice big bowl for our guts here, which is good because we're going to have lots of guts. Now, you could always throw away all of your guts or, or compost them, although that means you're going to have pumpkin vines coming out of your compost next year. Uh, but what I like to do with the seeds is I like to rinse them off, make sure all the stringy bits are off of them, and then I just bake them up for about 20 minutes in the same oven that I'm baking the pumpkins in. Pumpkin seeds are a favorite snack in our house. Although, let's be fair, is there anything that's salty and crunchy that isn't a favorite snack somewhere? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there are some of you out there who don't like pumpkin seeds. That would be interesting to know. Anybody out there who doesn't like pumpkin seeds when they've been baked up and are salted? Go ahead and let me know what it is that you don't like. Totally fine not to like something if, uh, just because, too, you know, but. All right, well, this is going to take a while. I'm just going to speed this up for the rest of the way, and I will see you again once they are all cleaned out. <laughs> Okay, so I've got all four halves scraped clear of all of the stringy bits and all of the seeds. And now what I'm going to do is I've got my sheet pan right here. Um, if it's a sheet pan that you know is has a tendency to stick, go ahead and put a little bit of nonstick spray or oil on it. I am just going to put these pumpkins on here the best way I can. Pan. I'm going to try and get all four on here. Ooh, looks like I'm going to make it. Now, if you need to break off the stems, see they come off real easy. That one, not quite as easy. I wanted to take some pumpkin with it. All right, so we've got the stems off, we've got the pumpkins in halves, and we've got them on this one baking sheet. Now I am going to 
go put these in the oven. I preheated it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And these are gonna go in anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna keep checking them. I'm gonna let you know when they're done. I'll see you back here when these pumpkins are done and ready to scoop. Okay, well, the oven just beeped. Let's check it out. That was 45 minutes. Woohoo! You'll see they are a darker, sort of a browner orange than they were before. Oh, yep, yeah, they're nice and soft. Well, at least the smaller ones are. I think what I'm going to do is put it back in the oven. You can overcook this a little bit to the point where it starts to brown and caramelize, but it's more likely that you're going to undercook it. So back in the oven it goes for another five minutes. All right, let's look at these. Oh, I'm getting some give on the big ones. You can see the little ones are definitely squishy. So I am going to put these aside to cool for a while. You can always dump them into your food processor while they're still hot if you want to burn your fingers. Ask me how I know this. Why, thanks for asking. It's because I've done it like an idiot. Don't do that. Don't hurt yourself. Saving time is never worth burning yourself. So I'm going to come back in a little while. And once this is cooled down, I am going to be scooping that into my food processor so we can make it into puree. And I'll show you how I typically store this. See you soon. All right, so we let this cool a little. I let it cool longer than I had anticipated. My youngest is still at the stage where he'll take a nap if I lay down by him until he falls asleep. And he's so cute when he's sleeping and I often get distracted in there so anyway enough about that I am going to scoop this pumpkin flesh out of the shells fun story first time I ever cooked a pumpkin to uh, make a pumpkin dessert rather than buying it in the can with my roommate in college she was from Japan and she had only ever had pumpkin soup that her grandmother made and she was staying with us for Thanksgiving because it just would have been too much of a hassle to go home for the Thanksgiving and uh, instead of baking them up like this where the flesh comes really easily away from that that shell we we hand peeled all the chunks of pop of pumpkin we hand peeled all the chunks of pumpkin and it probably took us about two hours for one pumpkin to hand peel it. Now I know better. Cook first, then get it away from the, the outer shell. So much easier. So I am still using that exact same tool that I used before, the broken ice cream scoop. And I'm sure if you have this style of ice cream scoop with the plunger or whatever it's called, that's not broken, it would probably still work. In fact, it might work better. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know if you can see this, but the pumpkin is coming right off of that shell. It's so nice and easy. All right, and so I've got one of those halves just about scraped clean. And then, I'll just use my nice handy to push it down so those stringy bits that didn't quite get in there do get all mushed up. I'm going to take the shell and put it in the bowl with the other compost and I'm going to leave the squirrels. We've got one squirrel in our yard. I've nicknamed him Chunky because he is just the chunkiest chunk of a squirrel I've ever seen. And whenever the kids hear me talk about Chunky they come running. In fact I was looking outside and so we cleaned up our garden, which we had a lot of uh, tomatoes that were green when we pulled those vines out of there. 
And so where the pile of vines were while we were trying to keep our garden organized and our compost organized, uh, there is a large pile of green tomatoes. And today I caught him just trying to dig a hole in the middle of that pile so he could just sort of use his paws to bat the little tomatoes in his, in his cache for the winter. And I got really excited and I started being like, oh, it's chunky. I was so excited that the kids who were supposed to be napping came running. My bad. He's so cute though. So, quick question for everyone. Are you more of a, as soon as it's not Halloween anymore, it's Christmas kind of person? Are you want somebody who wants to wait until Thanksgiving is done? Are you one of those people who's like, it's not Christmas season till December 1st? I'm curious. I am definitely a, I guess I'll celebrate Christmas with all the trimmings if, if, you have, if we have to kind of pe person. I'm such a Grinch. And I think this year I realized that the reason for that is all of those sort of like commercial trappings of Christmas, that's not... I, I'm not a huge fan. I, I don't like decorating a Christmas tree. The lights on just keep me up at night, you know? I, but the part about Christmas that I love, oh, let me backtrack. If you don't celebrate Christmas, like, that's fine too. Not everybody in the world has to be a Christian. <laughs> um, anyway, so celebrating the Christmas season, the part that I love is my husband and I, for the last several years, have um, made up a Christmas quartet with some friends of ours at church. All right, I don't think I'm going to get the rest of that pumpkin in there, so let me scrape this out while I finish telling my story. All right. Ah, I forgot. So I have an old ice cream pail that I saved after it was all done and that's what I keep my pumpkin in and I will take this to the freezer as soon as I've got all the pumpkin in it. I have another one in my freezer but that's from a different season and I like to I like to cook with the pumpkin that is the oldest first. Oh boy. Yeah, I worked at a restaurant for a short period of time. And one of the things you learn if you work food service is first in, first out. That's how you avoid food waste. So I have another container in the freezer, but that one's my old one. So this one is from this season earlier this season. Ooh, what a pretty color. All right, so I was saying about Christmas. Um, my favorite traditions have nothing to do with gift giving or decorations or buying things. You know, I, I'm not one who goes out early on Black Friday to get deals. I never been big into decorating all that stuff but the stuff that I love about that holiday season the Christmas season is the, the traditions that we have involving our family both our chosen family and those we were born to so one of my favorite traditions for Christmas every year is Joe and I will make that, we'll get together in a Christmas quartet with a couple other people from our church and we will sing traditional Christmas hymns as part of the service and it's just, there's candlelight at my ch church for the Christmas Eve service every year and my parents come to church with us and it's just, it's beautiful and it's my very favorite tradition. Christmas and I'm so sad that we're not gonna get those well it may not be my very favorite my very favorite 
is going over to my aunt's house for Christmas Eve dinner. After church every year, we go straight to my aunt's house and we have a big feast. Like, I'm talking, they have appetizers out enough to feed somebody dinner. And then there's a, like, usually a ham or a turkey on top of that. We have a big feast. It's some of my favorite people. And we just have so much fun every year. And I just, I'm missing that. I'm missing that in-person connection. And I'm, I'm sad about it. Let me scrape that down. I'm, yeah, I'm really sad about some of the traditions we're going to miss this year because of, because of Christmas and the situation we're in, in the world. But also, as a mom of small kids, those toy flyers start coming. And they're like, can I get this? I want that. Can I have this? I want that. And you know, like, three quarters of these things are things that they have in their, in their playroom already. But in a magazine, it looks so shiny and new. And I don't even want to think about Christmas shopping yet. But I know a lot of people do. Ooh, if you are looking for Christmas gifts, and anybody you know likes handmade jewelry, my mother makes handmade jewelry. And I don't know if anybody actually looks at the jewelry I wear in these videos, but I'm usually wearing one of her pieces. She makes stuff that matches, like I'm wearing today, or she's got some mix and match stuff that looks really nice together. Um, I really, I'm not really a jewelry person, but if I'm reaching for something in my collection, it's usually something that she made and she gave me. And it's not just because it's sentimental, it's because the stuff that she makes is really beautiful. If anybody is looking for some handmade jewelry for Christmas gifts or for themselves or whatever, um, I will make sure that the information for contacting my, my mother and her jewelry business is in the description box below. I don't know if anybody's interested. I know, random plug, but I gotta shout out my mom, which I think I do like every video that I cook in. I mentioned my mother taught me this or my mother taught me that. And I'm hoping that someday when my boys are grown and they're cooking in their own kitchens, they will be saying the same thing. My mom taught me this. I remember this about my mom. Anyway, so I've got all of that pumpkin puree. That is a full gallon of pumpkin puree. I need to be getting on making some desserts with this. Uh, so that's all you need to do. It's, it's really like making any other squash. You just bake it until it's soft. In this case, you're gonna puree it in your food processor until it's nice and smooth. And then I like to store it in a large container like this in the freezer. And then I can just get it out and thaw it any time that I'm going to be making desserts with it. I hope you enjoyed hanging out in the kitchen with me today. I would love it if anybody would tell me if they did this at home. Did you have any pumpkins outside that you were going to throw away and decided to make some pumpkin puree instead? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments. I hope you liked this video today. If you did, go ahead and give us a, a press that like button if you want to. Um, like I said, uh, we put out about one video at least every week, usually on Mondays. So if you liked this video or any of our others, go ahead and subscribe if you want to get another video every Monday. <laughs> well, I hope you had fun. I know I did, and I am going to definitely make some beautiful pumpkin desserts with this. Hope to see you in my kitchen again soon. Bye.